number five, we have a, a slightly different model of the climate system that's got a few new features to it. We see the initial temperature and albedo and ocean depth from before. The solar multiplier here is just something that if it's, if it's one, it's not going to change the solar input at all. If I make that greater, like two or 1.5 or three or something, that's going to increase, it's going to multiply the solar constant by 1.3 in this case. I'm going to undo that here. It also has something called a CO2. I'm going to run the model and see what happens. So it gets quite a bit colder because we've taken a lot of CO2 out of that measure right here. It gets down to um, 8.3 at the end of 80 years. Now if I turn the LB switch on, see what happens now. Now the temperature really drops. It drops to minus 5.6. So the difference between minus 5.6 and this, 8.3, that's the impact of the feedback mechanism. It has an effect, a cooling effect from 8.3 to minus 5.6, so something more than uh, 13 degrees of a negative shift in temperature for the feedback mechanism. So in this problem, you're going to be assigned a CO2 multiplier value, and you'll type that in here. It'll be something like 0.25 or 0.5 or 2 or 4, something along those lines. You enter that number in there, let's say you've got four. And then you run the model uh, with the albedo switch off. And then you run again with the albedo switch on, and you look at the temperature difference between those two um, runs of the model. You get a sense of how big the um, albedo feedback um, effect is in the climate system.